Hey everyone, this video is going to be in two parts because I did it in one and that was like way too long. So make sure you check out part two, which is coming out very soon, and that will be call tracing in the number five crossbar. Hey, welcome. A lot of times in movies and stuff, there's a trope about tracing the call. And it's, it's something where if you've seen enough thriller movies or stuff, you know that you, know, you got to trace the call. And in modern movies, they sort of do it with a computer and in older movies, it's, there's always this thing where it takes a long time and they have to keep the caller on the line. And, and I wanted to kind of talk about some of the mystery about how that actually works and why call tracing takes so long and, and why it was this big, uh, crazy, fancy process. We posted a, uh, a thread on Twitter a while back um, about this movie called The Slender Thread. And in that movie, there is a woman who needs help and through the plot or whatever, she's called somebody and they need to trace the call to find out where she's calling from so they can go save her life or whatever. And the movie takes you through a telephone office and you see someone working at a test panel and then looking at some switches and then he says, oh, the call's coming from here. And that's fairly accurate for Hollywood, like I'm pretty impressed, but they really abbreviated the process because if you had to really trace a call, it would take a lot longer and end up being like half the movie just to figure out where the call's coming from. So what we're gonna do here is trace a call through the panel office. I'll pick up a phone somewhere and I'll call a certain number and I'll show you how we work back from the from the called num uh, the called number where it terminated, and we work back through the frames to find out where the call originated. One thing you do need to know before tracing a call is that architecture. So, if 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 you just walked into a switch for or, you know a panel switch or a crossbar switch for the first time, no way you wouldn't be able to do it because you have to know how everything is interconnected. Now in the panel switch. That's sort of easy for me because I wired it. So I sort of know where everything goes, but we're going to walk you through it anyway, as though we're learning this, this process for the first time. So here we go. All right. The number that we want to trace, uh, the destination of the call is 7225678. Now we start on this frame because this is the final frame and this is where all of the calls terminate. This is where the end of the call is. And what I have to do is figure out which of these selectors is on the line 5678 in this office, which is the 722 office. So right now it's really easy because I only have one, two, three. Okay, but at the time I only had one that was actually anywhere. In real life, this would be a lot harder because you'd have to go through a number of frames to figure out which one it is. But this is final frame number seven, and this final frame handles the lines in the 5,000 group. In our final frame, it's split down the middle here, and this side is 5,000 to 5,499, and on this side, it's 5,500 to 5,999. Right. Uh, we want five, six, seven, eight. So here is five, five. Here is five, six. This little rectangle right here is the terminals for the 5600 group. And at this point, we only have one selector up and it's about three quarters of the way up the bank. So right around like the 75 area. So five, 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 six, seven something. So I already have a hunch that it's this one. Even if I didn't know it was this one, I have a hunch. And what we're gonna do now is confirm by looking at which of these brushes is actually tripped. So the, all of these brushes are in the same place because they're all attached to the rod, but one of them, it happens to be this one, is actually tripped and touching the terminals. And we can see the little trip finger here. So I have a hunch that it's this one. The way I can prove it is by taking a rack reading. So I'll take my flashlight, and down here on this rack, there are 
numbers uh, etched into it that are probably really hard to see on camera, but here's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And then if I go down here, I see 70, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's my selector, all right? So this is our first part of the call. What we have to do now is work backwards and figure out what piece of equipment is trying to access this particular selector because this is permanently tied to some piece of equipment that's behind us. Let's go take a look at that. At this point, I would need my office records because um, this is the incoming frame and each of these terminals on the incoming bank is going to go to some final frame somewhere, okay? And I don't necessarily have memorized which one is going where. But I know that we're in the 5,000s group. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5,000 on my incoming. And this section right here is the lower half of the 5,000s group. And this section right here is the upper half of the 5,000s group. So five, six, seven, eight is in the upper half. So it looks like this selector is gonna be the one that I want. And if I look at the brush again, I can see that this brush is the one that's tripped. So it's very likely that it's this selector. And if I wanted to, I could take a rack reading to determine which set of terminals it's definitely on, but I don't even need to do that because it's already obvious to me which one it is. One of the things I want to mention before we continue on is that in our museum, in addition to me being the one who wired all of this stuff, um, we only have one of each frame. So because we only have one of everything, it's pretty easy to determine where things are coming from because there's only one of the thing. Um, in a real office, like with that incoming frame we were just talking about, there may be 10 or more of those incoming frames, each with 60 selectors on them. And each of those selectors could be the one that that's handling our call. And this is why it would take so long. Because while I could just go over and look at the frame and be like, oh yeah, it's that one. Um, in a real office during busy hour, when all of your selectors were up and you had you know, 10 or more incoming frames to choose from, and then 10 or more district frames to choose from, um, that could get really, really difficult. And once the caller hangs up, all of those selectors drop down again. So you've just lost your trace at that point. And you can't even block those selectors up because you don't know what, in order to block it, you need to know the next step back. And you don't know the next step back until you get there. So this is a very real-time process. Okay, so we have our incoming selector and I turned the call simulator off for now. So we know that it's this one because this selector has this brush tripped and it's sitting at the 50, the high end of the 5,000s group on my incoming frame. My next question at this point is, what is this selector connected to? So. All of these incoming selectors on as many frames as I have can either come from within my same office or they could come from some other central office somewhere, right? They could come from the crossbar office or the number five or whatever. Now, I need to know that for this selector, which is number 16, where is that call coming from? And this is where I have to decide, is it coming from in this switch or do I have to go looking in some other switch to trace the call? Now in real life, if I had to go looking at some other switch, I would probably just make a phone call to somebody and say, hey, I've got this incoming off normal on a call trace. I need you to figure out where it's going on your end. But for the purposes of this trace, we're gonna go look at our office records, which is over there. So, here I have a list of all of my incomings and which 
and where they're coming from locally, all right? And I can see here that for incoming number 16, it's a local incoming and it's connected to district terminal number 44. Okay, so that tells me that this is coming from inside the office. So what we'll do is we'll walk over to our district frame and I'll turn the call set on just for fun. And what we need to do on our district frame is figure out which of these selectors is currently connected to that incoming, All right? Now, everything on these terminal banks are trunks to elsewhere. In the museum, some of these trunks go to the panel office where they terminate on that incoming. Some of these trunks go to the number five crossbar where they terminate over there. And still more of these trunks up there go to the number one crossbar where they terminate across the room. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a district selector that is stopped at terminal number 44 in a bank where there are trunks that go to that incoming frame. All right. And since the call simulator isn't placing any calls right now, it's really clear that it's pretty much got to be this one because this is the only call that's up right now. We have this guy up as well, and if I didn't know that that call just started, I know that that was down here, not at Terminal 44. Same with this one, it's down here at like Terminal 0, not 44. I'm looking at this selector, I'm seeing that it's just about halfway up the frame, so around Terminal number 50, and it's tripped right here in the bank where my panel incomings live. So again, all these terminals here go to incoming selectors. So what I can do again is I could take a rack reading and I could see that 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, this is my district. So we're getting very, very close now to where this call is originating from. So the last step I need to do is for this district number, I need to find out which line finder is serving that district. And for that, we have it written out in Sharpie on the frame. This is district number 25, and it's served by line finder number 28. That's a permanent connection that will never change. So what we do now is go one step further back again to our line finder frame, and we look at where line number, or where that line finder actually is. So this is our line finder, and each line finder rod is permanently mated to one district rod. So I just looked for line finder number 28, and again in Sharpie here we have district number 25 is what it's permanently mated to. So this line finder is sitting on the terminal of my calling party. What we need to do one more time is figure out which of these brushes are tripped? And it's gonna be really hard to see on the camera, but this brush isn't tripped. This brush isn't tripped. It's actually this brush right here. And you can see that little guy, kind of, there, you can see him just there. That little guy that's angled downward, that's telling me that this brush is the one that's tripped and this is on the line of the calling party. Right? So there's nothing on the frame though that tells me what that line is. And in a full-size panel office, you could have 10,000 lines. So there's 300 possible terminals on this frame, actually 600, but we won't get into that right now. But ordinarily there'd be 300 set uh, terminals on this frame. So if I had a full 10,000 line office, I would have a bunch of these frames and there's no way for me to know that that brush on that terminal is XYZ subscriber. So what I have to do now is go to my office records. This is, by, by the way, uh, another thing you see in that movie, The Slender Thread, where the guy opens a drawer and like flips through some documents and pulls out a sheet. I think what he's supposed to be doing there is looking up the office records. So the office records are gonna tell me 
the assignments for everything. And if I didn't already know, say, which incoming is serving which final, which district is serving which incoming, and so on, I could look at the office records and they would tell me that. The same thing for subscriber lines. Somewhere in one of these files, I would have something that said for every subscriber, which terminal on my line finder are they, and which line finder frame are they even on, okay? And so I'd pull that out, I'd open it up, I'd go, oh, uh, terminal number, you know, 42 on that line finder is this phone number. Now, this is where I get to cheat a little bit because I wired this phone. So I know exactly where that terminal goes because I put it there. So what we can do is come on over here It's this phone here that originated the call and the number is 722-5778. So all I gotta do is hang that up and my nuisance call is gone. 